and go to our city center studio where we have security analyst Mwenda Mbijiwe. Mwenda, thank you for joining us on KTN Prime. Let's look at the issue of security stroke insecurity at the coastal region and more specifically in Lamu. This is what concerns me, Mwenda. These are men and women who think they can attack a military base and get away with it. What goes through your mind when you hear such stories? It shows, uh, Linda, the blended nature of the terrorist group. They are ready to die. Just like their counterparts elsewhere around the world, they do not fear death. They go out there ready to die, and they don't care who they're going to attack. All right, Mwenda, let's listen to a bite by Ugandan President uh, Yoweri Museveni uh, that he had on Madaraka Day this year. Kama huko na uwezo, unashambulia kambi ya adui. Hapo tunasema huko na uwezo. Kama huna uwezo wa kushambulia ngome, afadhali unashambulia askari ambao unapigana nao wachua wanasafiri. Kama huwezo kufanya moja ya hao mawili, umeshindwa. Mwenda, do you think that Al-Shabaab is now changing tack? They're moving away from soft targets, quote-unquote. Yeah, certainly borrowing a leaf from their counterparts, like in uh, ISIS, they are now ready to attack military embankments. You saw what ISIS is doing out in Iraq. They get into a vehicle and ram it into a, a military barracks. So these guys are out there to die. They have nothing to lose. Death is not anything that scares them, Linda. Has it crossed your mind, Mwenda, that pe these people may be living within the country? I'm looking at the fact that you have over 170 people armed walking to a military camp within Lamu. That probably means they may not have crossed the border. They may be within the country. Yeah, certainly. With the, with the condition of the weather right now all over the country, it is almost obvious that they did not drive from far. They must have been within the vicinity. And so there's a question of how thorough is our intelligence in locating where these uh, evil people live, where they stay, and finally smoking them out. We do not have to wait until they come to a target so that we can go after them. We can actually take the fight to them and get them long before they even come to attack. Mwenda, this is a year after that attack on Mpeketoni. One would have expected more security on the ground. And here's the thing. Last year, when they attacked Mpeketoni, we were told that they went into Boni Forest. 2015, we're being told the same thing. These are people who are being pursued into Boni Forest. What is it about this forest that makes it impossible for security forces to go in and clear it once and for all? Certainly, Linda, that is the question in the minds of many Kenyans. I think our military forces and, and the other security uh, forces as well have done a thorough job before. For example, uh, the famous Mount Elgon. We went in there, the terrain was challenging, there were hills, there were rocks. We went in and we, we, we brought the rest of the region under control. The question about Boni is, is this a very big forest that we cannot comb? I don't think it is. I think we just need to put boots on the ground and send the men in there and clear this mess once and for all, Linda. Mwenda, this of course after Inspector General of Police gave that alert and now we are seeing that this is an attack that was repulsed. I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Do you think this has anything to do with the fact that the US President is expected in the country next month? Because there was a time when several um, individuals came out and said they think Western nations are not sharing intelligence with the Kenyan government. I think uh, in the intelligence community there has been a lot of cooperation in the past. Even in Peketoni uh, last year, remember His Excellency, the President said there was intelligence and the intelligence was not acted upon. But looks like this time, if there was intel, then it was acted upon. The military barracks, for example, uh, uh, heightened their level of alertness. They prepared the embankment against the attack. And that was the reason why the rapid response by the KDF you know, saved a lot of lives of the soldiers. Only two died, may their souls rest in peace. But also then they hit the enemy so hard that he ran away with injuries. We now hear that many died along the way as they ran away. One or two died along the way and several more were killed on site and many went away wounded. So this could have been an action on intelligence. Whether the intelligence came from locally or internationally, I think it only matters that we acted on intelligence. And if we can take advantage of the Obama coming and gather as much intel as possible, and then why not? We're keeping this country safe.
Mwenda Mijue, always a pleasure speaking to you. Mwenda Mijue speaking to us on that attack on a military base in Lamu that was repulsed by KDF. We thank you for staying with KTN Prime.